Alright, this is Navy Old Salt Gamer. Uh, lots of changes at the base here on Mars. Nothing much on the inside. But let's put my helmet on. Open that up first. Uh, close, lock. Alright. So I've said in past episodes that I don't like mining. Uh, there's other things I'd rather do than mining. So I set up this pretty massive area out here. And I'm going to go over what I'm doing here. Um, I like the uh, deep miners. They're, they're pretty good. They pretty much supply you with a slow um, non-stop input of ores. Now they come out as dirty ores so you have to put them in a centrifuge. I'm using centrifuges here. They also have uh, fuel driven centrifuges that use oxygen and uh, volatiles which is a little faster than these but um, I didn't want to run my fuel all the way over from the other side so there's uh, pretty big differences there. This is all automated I don't have to touch this. It took me about a day to set all this up, most of it with the programming, because I had to experiment and play to get it to work. So let me go over what's going on here. Again, like I said, the deep miners are providing dirty ore. I got a stacker here that stacks the dirty ore into a stack of 50. Um, I got two of these running, they're both doing the exact same thing. So. Um, basically, once this gets to 50 via my IC chip, it then shuts down the deep miner, which saves on power, because now there's one waiting to go into the centrifuge. The centrifuge, unfortunately, that one just started. Let's see. They both just started. <laughs> so they both got, that one's got 45 dirty ore. That one's got 46 dirty ore. But when this gets down to zero, the program that I wrote automatically opens this and ejects it out into the appropriate silo via sorters and uh, stacks it in stacks of 50. So uh, Let's go where I want to do from here. Uh, the centrifuge, like I said, spits it into sorters. This one is my iron. And I can bring this out just so I can see. Yeah, that's my iron silo. My iron, iron sorter. Sorters are a little tricky. Um, basically, you have to set it up over here on the computer. It's how I do it anyway. And you can see the iron sorter the white list, the only thing that goes through is iron. Everything else gets sent to the next sorter. Get up here again. So if it's what comes out of the centrifuge is iron, it goes straight through and then goes into this iron stacker. You see there's 21 iron in there. Once that hits 50, it sends that into the uh, iron silo and so on down the line. So if it's not iron, it'll get passed to the copper sorter, and the same process begins all over again. So um, it's pretty handy. All <coughs> like I said, all automated. Uh, this is my ore dump. Basically, this is stuff that goes through all the sorters that I haven't really set up anything on because I don't really care too much. You don't. I mean, how often do you need nickel and lead? I just dug a hole let it fall into it and then every once in a while you see that's just one I'll just pick them up and stack them and I can do whatever I need to do with them but if you stack them then you can just drop them and it makes this pile smaller and if it ever gets to 50 then I'll probably just uh, make another silo here and throw it in that silo but uh, let's take a look at the program while we wait see I got 38 there yet so um, let's drop this down here, open it up, take this out, I just 
just want to import this. I don't know if I have the latest version in that one or okay. So uh, again, I'm not the best programmer. My programs work. <laughs> That's all that matters to me. <coughs> Excuse me. So what happens here? Um, I alias. This is the uh, um, centrifuge, the deep miner. And again, I have two. So one's called one, one, and the other one's called two. <coughs> Just to clarify and make it easier for me. And this is the stacker. Now, it starts normal. Uh, the first run through it's going to turn on the centrifuge uh, open the centrifuge set it to zero so it's actually going to close the centrifuge and it's going to turn the deep miner on I'm not sure why I got that in there twice I'm going to have to take that one out that's an extra line of code um, and then sends it to what I called the regent check now the regent check goes down here looks at the stacker and looks at the export count and why it does that if you pull up this and set it to the right one you can see in this one the export count is zero that's because it doesn't have 50 yet when it has 50 let's get rid of that again when it has 50, it'll export it automatically, and it'll set the export count to zero. I'm sorry, to one. When that happens, it'll come down here. If it's still zero, if our if the export count is zero, then it's going to. I know I don't like using the line numbers. I'm going to put in um, what well they call them calls in here, but um, it's not good to use line numbers at this point. I haven't updated it and it works so I will work on that but if it if it's uh, still zero then it jumps to 16 and keeps the deep miner hold on a second is there a stacker export count yeah as long as the export count is zero it'll go down and turn this doesn't look right I did this yesterday, so it is working. Matter of fact, I think I just heard it shut down. So I'll have to look back at that again here. Yeah, see, it just exported. So now there's one sitting in here waiting to go into the centrifuge, and it shut the miner off. So I'm looking at this incorrectly. <laughs> I should have looked at this before I, oops, before I started the video. I was doing a region check. The stacker export count is greater than zero. Oh, greater than zero. So greater than zero goes to 16, and then it turns the deep miner off. If it's not greater than zero, it loops back to 13 and keeps waiting for it to go to zero. So that makes sense. It also um, closes, and just in case it was open at the time, it'll make sure that the centrifuge is closed. Um, it happened to be closed there, but that's that's a point where it'll reclose it if it is open. And then it'll load the centrifuge's regents count. Now the regents count, and I'll go over that here in a second, uh, will be 50 when the ore is completed. So I put, if it's greater than 49, then jump to dump. Now if you go over here, see here the regents count is 26 and if you look at the ores you add that up there's 26 there's still 24 waiting to be done so since I'm dumping 50 every time that's why I put if it's greater than 49 go to dump if it's not it'll just loop back up and do this whole thing all over again until the region count is done now dump is pretty simple dump uh, opens the centrifuge so uh, the ores can be dumped. It'll shut down the centrifuge's rotation, which takes a few seconds. And then it'll just keep cycling. Uh, it'll load the region count, and it'll keep recycling this until the region count is zero. 
and then it'll go to reset cycler. I should really just change this to reset. So once it's dumped all the ore, it'll jump down here to reset cycler. And this is where, because uh, things like uh, the centrifuge will keep that import count, when you do a save clear memory one, it wipes out all the numbers that it has in there. Same thing with the deep miner, it turns that back on. The stacker will keep a, a count of one export unless you clear the memory, it resets it to zero. And then I close the centrifuge and then I jump back to start and the whole process starts all over again. So this has been working pretty well. I don't have to do anything with it. I'd like to show you, let me get a maintenance item here. Okay. So, now both of these have shut down. This saves a lot on power. No reason to keep piling up dirty ores in the chutes eventually because the centrifuge is slower than the deep miner. So eventually you're going to get this completely crammed with dirty ore and there's no reason to do that, it's a waste of power. So, uh, both of those are done and reset. Which one is that? It's less here. That one's got 15 less. That's got 16 less. So they're going to both stop at the same time. So we'll just wait a couple minutes. I don't know if, how much everybody knows about sorter programs. I have to experiment. I'm chicken to turn this off. I don't know if it'll still work. I think it will. But that seems like kind of a waste to leave the computer on. But um, I'm not sure if I have to leave that on or not. So I'm, I'm leaving it on for now. Pick this up. I wish it was easier to pick that up. Alright, so we'll just stay with this one because you got a better view. But again, uh, this has been running of probably three hours while I was trying to program it and uh, it's, I have ten I iron in there now gold, is, I got two gold uh, if you can look back on here this is, you can see kind of the ratio of ores you get, I get more iron and coal uh, some silicone and copper but it comes in based on the deep miner spits out dirty ore based on the starting parameters of the ore on the planet. So it keeps the ratios the same. So you're going to get more iron, which is fine. You use a lot of iron. So uh, Two gold. I've been taking the coal out and putting it in. And I'll probably, in a crazy a moment of craziness, I'll probably just put a bunch of shoots in send my coal right over to the generator so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, one there. I didn't get a full one of those yet. And I think I got one silicone. I'm pretty sure this is my silicone sorter. I named everything so I could keep it. Yeah, silicone stacker, stacker silicone storer, sorter. I renamed everything so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Let's get over here before this stops. Should have a little bit left. Like I said, I could, uh, and I could set up, and I might just do that, I could set up uh, maybe one or two even more deep miners and run them with using the same program. And I could get ore faster if I need to. Uh, kind of a power intensive setup. Not bad. I'm, I may have to, let me see, I, yeah, so I used a couple three or four yesterday. So it's still 17 coal in there, but I may expand this a couple. And that's normal when you expand your base, you gotta monitor how much power you're using and make adjustments as necessary. Six left. I just want to demonstrate how this will close this out. I didn't put a video on yesterday because uh, I was kind of hoping I could finish this up, but it literally took me like eight hours setting all this up. Um, the silos um, take steel. The I think it's 15 steel for each deep miner. It, it took a lot of steel. 
since I did a lot of mining, I am gl actually glad I didn't start the recording because I would have gotten nothing to you because, you know, you can't do an eight-hour recording. <laughs> but I got it all set up. Lots of shoot work here. Um, not as bad as it looks. I did have all the silos next to each other, and then I realized I couldn't get the power to them, so I had to spread them out a little bit. That you know, that's one of those things. As you're doing something, you you just learn. But this is the f most fun part of this game uh, for me, anyway. I love programming things, getting it to do what I want it to do, and then just sitting back and watching it work. It's kind of really fun for me, anyway. But uh, two ores left. Oh, that one opened. See now, after it opens, it has to spin down. We'll see it better over here. One left. So now it's telling my program, hey, I got no regents left. So then it kicks into dump. And that's what it's doing here. It's shutting down the spin. And you can hear the other one dumping all its ores into the sorters. As soon as this gets to zero, it dumps all the ores. It did automatically reload. If you see in there, it says it has 50 ores. As soon as that opens, it takes the 50 dirty ores in. It doesn't do anything with that until it gets through dump mode. And then it goes back into start. And now notice that the drill is fired up because I reset the sorter um, info count to zero with that reset loop. So when that reads zero, then it knows to turn the deep miner on. So I'm not wasting any more electricity than I have to. And if you keep this running, you'll eventually cram the chutes full of dirty ore and uh, then you'll figure out what's wrong and you'll bust one of these open and the next thing you know you got 20 stacks of ore flying through the air because it's just crammed in there. So. I wanted to make sure, for two reasons, to avoid that and to save power to have that shut down. So that uh, works pretty well. I'm curious through comments to tell me what you think of this, if you know a better way. Um, I kind of like the idea of just dumping the ore that I don't use very often. And then if I need it, I'll just climb, uh, you know, climb down the hole and grab what I need. I don't need nuclear at this point. Cobalt's always good to have. Um, a lot of the stuff you don't really need very often, if at all. So I don't really want to stack it in the silo. I'll just shoot it out <laughs> into a pit. <laughs> so that pretty much covers that part of it. Uh, this might be a short video compared to all the work I put in, but that's okay. Uh, I don't think you guys would want to sit around and watch me build for eight hours. Um, Power-wise, I'm still doing good. I'm going to switch this. you got to keep an eye on pressures. I am in full recycle mode now. Uh, I do have to add volatiles if I do a lot of mining. Um, I'll just drop a a volatile in here but I have everything closed off so this is all being recycled as you can see there's no air in there so once it comes out of my living space it goes right back in through my filters and I do use more carbon monoxide uh, CO2 because of my garden my plants and my greenhouse are absorbing it so every once in a while I will open this if I need to, just to charge the carbon, or CO2 from the atmosphere because it's 95% on Mars, so you could just pump air into there. 
and I'm very careful to do this because it helps. But you do surprisingly, I did expand my garden. Surprisingly, you do go through a lot of CO2 with with uh, plants. So I'm very. I like to dump my CO2 into my living space because that helps keep my CO2 levels where I want them to be. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video. I did break down and put an air conditioner in here because for some reason this setup on Mars, and I'm not sure exactly why, does seem to get a little warm. So I have this turning on at 28 degrees and turning off at 23 degrees. It doesn't run very often, but every once in a while I'll come in here and that'll be kicked on. And it doesn't stay on long, so it's not a big power draw. Um, I didn't normally have to do that, so I'm kind of surprised at this point that I did. Um, Plant-wise, I'm starting to get a little full in my refrigerator. So probably in this next video I will are these done? No. And by the way, everything that I planted I should cover that too. Um, I think it was either last upgrade or the upgrade before that. I can remember which one this is. Is it this one? I didn't label it. That's why you should label stuff. Don't export. Import. Nope, that's my cooling. That's the one that's calling, controlling my cooling. With this one. Import. Yeah. Um, a couple upgrades ago. Let me put this back in just in case. I don't want to screw things up. Um, a couple upgrades ago, they changed the way the day-night cycle and the angles of the sun worked, and it affected Mars. So I did have to up my uh, solar angle to 105, or else I wasn't getting enough light. So if you're using that and you're saying, well, this isn't working, up it to uh, make it less than 105, and it'll keep your grow lights on long enough to keep all your plants thriving and you don't have to rely on the sun. That's very important to me. I don't like relying on the sun. Um, when they do fix storms, if you get a storm and it lasts a whole day, all of a sudden your plants don't get enough light. I don't like relying on the sun. But with that setting, everything I've planted, as you can see, is thriving. Uh, so that makes me happy. I'm going to actually add a couple more rows, probably. Got plenty of seeds. In the next episode, I'm going to experiment with trading. I'm not happy with the current system for trading. Um, it's a lot of work for hardly any benefit. I don't know why they changed it from before, but you get traders now, and they only buy or sell five different items. Well, why would an intergalactic traveler limit himself so much? You would think he would want to deal as much as he could. I mean, you'll get a, a, a fruit dealer or a, a plant dealer, and he won't have tomatoes. Well, okay, he'll sell, you know, ferns and five other items. But it's like hit and miss to find the item that you, you want. Unless you want to go really go big, and I'll probably do that and uh, make an enclosed hangar for the big human trader to come. I don't. I have not done that yet, so that might be a learning experience. Um, but my refrigerator's full. I got plenty of seeds. So what I'll probably do um, is set my kitchen up, which we talked about a little bit. I'll put my kitchen up here so I can at least make some food. I did find another can, so I, I fibbed in the last one. I thought I was out of cans, but I had one more can. So I haven't done that yet. Um, everything else is the same. 
uh, made a lot of ores. That should be it. So like I said, this is a short video, but uh, a lot of changes on the outside there. I, the less mining I have to do, the better. That leaves me time to concentrate on uh, things like the trader, which I'll set up next time. I'll probably put him on the roof. Not sure about that yet. So my ultimate goals, expand the garden, do trading, in the future build a rocket, do some more mining that way. Uh, that's going to be a learning experience for me because I have not done a rocket yet. Uh, we'll see if I can blow up something. <laughs> Alright, quick video, a lot going on. Uh, please comment on what you think about my mining if you have any recommendations to make it better. I'd love to hear from you. You have a good day. This is Navy Old Salt Gamer. If you like these videos, subscribe, hit the like button. Thanks.